Hey everyone, and welcome back to Remember This Tech. I'm going to be doing an unboxing of the Signal 4K30 by NZXT. Now, if you've heard NZXT before, they're in the PC case manufacturer and makers line, but they came up with this card capture device, and it's like external, and it's supposed to be pretty good. Now, if you've looked for capture cards, you probably know that they range anywhere from $15 all the way up to 700 plus on pro video audio devices. Well, since I'm not independently wealthy, I had to go for this one and I got it on sale for 120 on Best Buy. It was $50 off. That's a bargain because they're normally 180 plus on other sites. So, I'll show you the specifications in detail for this card right here. Please press pause if you need more time to view them. So let's get right into it, shall we? The Signal 4K30 by NZXT. So we open up the box. We have on top QR code for the manual on how to use this and download the manual and do stuff with it. And here, I first picked this up, the capture card. I'm going to tell you that it is heavy. It is heavier than I've ever thought it would be. I would say it's like two pounds. All we have here is an in and out HDMI port and a USB-C, but if the weight of how this is and the internal components are any indication of, it's gotta be pretty decent. What else is in the box? We have a USB to USB-C cable here. This will go into the device, this will go into your computer and one HDMI cable. Obviously you'll need one to go input from your device that you're recording from. Then you have an output to your TV so you can view what you're gaming on or watching TV on, etc. And this obviously, you'll have this hooked up here. The C port, and this will go into your computer that you'll be capturing on. So in order to use this device, you need not only a really powerful computer that you can cycle it back into, but you probably need two PCs or a Mac because you'll need something that's going to feed the signals that's translated or copied from this into that device, into capture software on the other computer, and then you'll capture what you're seeing on your other machine, whether that's a video game stream, whether that's home video, whether that's TV, depends on what you're doing. Let's set this up and then test it and tell you what software is that we can use to get this to work. And we'll actually see how this works or doesn't, depends, but I have good feeling about this. Come on, let's get it set up, be right back. So just for this part of this video, I'll show you that uh, if you use the card here that came in the box, you can use a QR code or you can use the, the manual link and you can go to their website and this is the unit here. So here we have the English manual and it tells you how to set it up. If there's firmware, you can apply it and how to apply it here. Contents of the box. And there's your connections, like I mentioned before. And how you connect it to your PC, which I've done down below here. I'll show you in a minute. You can also use it for your gaming systems, Xbox, Now, let's go over some specifications really quick. It 
as a firmware update. If you click on the firmware updates, you can click here and then download the cam, uh, monitor your system, maybe even flash it with new firmware if you have to. What does this capture or NZXT cam software do once installed? Well, monitor your system, uh, RAM clocks, temperatures, fans, network speed, how much is left on your storage, sp system specs, set up your lighting for your motherboards, which they make obviously, uh, or rather their um, cases as well cooling systems, whatever. But moreover, um, capture card, it sees that the capture card is plugged in and ZXT signal 4K30. There is a update to the firmware. So yeah, why not flash it? Let's try this. Mm, it's not always recommended you always get the newest, latest and greatest firmware, but sometimes it has fixes, bug fixes, irons out things, smooths it out, increases performance. So. I'm doing it right now and we'll be right back and then we will show you what capture software we're going to use and the setup and see how this thing actually captures. Is it good? Can it do what it says at 4K, 1080p, 60 FPS, 30? Well, we're going to find out. Be right back. Obviously, I'm still recording this without the capture card because I'm setting it up right now. So when you first launch the OBS software, you uh, come through the auto configuration wizard. Um, so we're recording. I'm not streaming at this time. So that's my choice. There's three others and that's what I'll be using. And this is a test monitor right here. But I want 1080p, so I'm switching it to 1080p. Um, and then you can choose 30 current. And that's kind of the minimum you want because other than that, you're going to get issues. But so next, 1080p, 30. So that's my first test. That's what we're going to try. Apply. Now, just because it says 1080p doesn't mean you can't select 4k but for now we're setting this up this way sound like a broken record put it wherever you want just as long as you know where it is make sure you have enough space because this is going to gobble up some space recording quality and your codex this is h2264 audio so if it's not set up um in the correct audio it's going to not record the sound in your video 1080p hotkeys in case you want to start and stop streaming all right so some of this is set up yes save changes um here's a little gear button down here for your sources and here's the plus so we have to capture our source where is it coming from? Well, we've got to find our device. Some media sorts. All right, so an NZXT signal 4K 30 video sees it. going to do it at the default that it comes from the device and okay so right now we have over here you're seeing the mouse move on my mini computer and we're just going to do a YouTube chat test we're going to go to my channel so I only have 1080p videos here but let's make sure we're at 1080p. Yep. And hey everyone, and welcome back to Remember This Tech. 
So what we're going to do here is start the capture and then we'll switch it around. But let's see if we can't start recording. Start recording. So now it should be recording from the other PC here. And I'll show you the whole setup. Over here is the mini computer. Here's the test monitor. Here's the output for the mini computer. Let's go full screen here. And let's go and play this. And over here. Different than normal in the fact that I'm going to be reviewing my top 10 free to play Steam games. Now, a lot of you don't have the money or don't want to spend the extra. So my final thoughts on this NZXT Signal 4K30 capture card. Overall, it's been pretty good. It's got enough processing power that you don't have to worry about capturing the signal. Now, sometimes some cards are finicky on their output or their pass through rather that I've noticed and that you've got to make sure your drivers are up to date for your graphics card from the test system that you're testing and pushing through the card. Because if they're not, it's going to display a green screen on your capture computer where your device is feeding through. Now that also could be that uh, one of the adapters you're using is like an analog device, goes from digital to analog and vice versa. So there's a number of things that I've encountered. One other thing to note is that when you're setting up a new test machine, and doing the pass through to the Signal 4K 30 device is that you've gotta make sure that when you're using OBS, which is a free software that I used for the capture, that you've gotta make sure that you reconfigure the audio tab within OBS settings and the desk, make sure that the desktop audio and desktop audio 2 are both disabled within OBS software. Um, why is that important? Because it's going to cause a reverb effect in the background. Um, make sure your signal output from your video, from your capture machine that you're testing on, also their, the output for the audio is correct. And make sure that your microphone is correctly added into the mic auxiliary audio drop down box if you're going to be using your microphone for your capture as well. I've noticed that I've had to fiddle with these settings each time I do a recording of uh, a capture of a, a test system that I'm capturing video from, for like games or something. And to be honest, it's a little bit frustrating that the system isn't more, I don't know how you put it, more intelligent in a software and how it picks that up. Um, you know, you think that it would be 
able to pick up your output to your audio and your video processing signal and arrange it so the inputs go right through the device and it auto configures it but no every time i've had to do something i have to go in and i have to double check these settings record a sample snip of um, a game or something i'm recording and test to make sure the audio pass through is correct passes through correctly you wouldn't imagine how many times i thought oh i got it it's all set up and then i have to go in and realize that the footage that i just spent time doing has no audio for the game or vice versa or whatever i'm capturing so that's one of the biggest caveats that i have for this system again i'm using obs software it's free it's supposed to be good but you really got to stay on top of it the quality is good as far as its output but i've noticed another thing that if you're going to use this video output for the capture in a creating a, a, a video compilation like a edit for a video for youtube or something that adobe premiere pro tells me it gives me the the middle finger and it says it can't process this format um, for the default one so i had to i have to take some of that and i have to go to davinci resolve and then i have to work with that instead but davinci resolve doesn't have a problem with these exported uh, video files and for that matter it doesn't have a problem with dealing with multiple different video uh, types sources as well premiere pro what's up you can select different outputs for it when you capture it and it saves it so um for the price of a little bit over a hundred it's not a bad setup you know there's a few caveats that i noticed um there are you know the elgato i guess system setups capture cards and i haven't tested them so i can't speak to them but for this one, if you can nab it for about a hundred bucks, even with the little problems that I mentioned, it's still a pretty stable card and it can capture 4K output. Just make sure you set the capture to 4K so it matches your source or select match source because it'll default fault to like a 1080p or something. So that's my review of the NZXT Signal 4K30 capture card. Thanks for watching. Remember this tech.